Episode 3 Burn, Baby, Burn I bet you missed my big openings, didn't you? Hit it. Tell me what you're looking for, baby, if you like what you see. Tell me what you're wanting, baby, I got it all in me. <laughs> I've spent so many days trying to hold it back. But I've got to let it loose Or else I'm gonna attack I wanna burn, baby, set the whole thing aflame Burn, baby, till you're screaming my name Burn, baby, cause it's all inside Burn, baby, I'm not trying to hide Always wanted to burn light And burn so deep Burn so bright that no one could sleep I wanna burn, baby, and make everyone watch me burn Tell me if I got it all, baby Cause I can't eat or sleep Tell me what you're wanting, baby If I'm the one to keep I've spent all of my time changing for you Please let me know I'm pretty too I wanna burn, baby, set the whole thing aflame Burn, baby, till you're screaming my name Burn, baby, cause it's all inside Burn, baby, I'm not trying to hide Always wanted to burn light Burn so deep, burn so bright that no one could sleep I wanna burn, baby, and make everyone watch me burn If you don't want me at all, I don't know what I'd do I'd pick up the phone and call just to pray that I'd get through Show you how I've changed, give you the earth All that I've got till I've spent all my worth I'm burned, I'm burned I'm burned, I'm burned I wanna burn, baby, set the whole thing aflame Burn, baby, till you're screaming my name Burn, baby, cause it's all inside Burn, baby, I'm not trying to hide I've always wanted to burn light And burn so deep, oh, burn so bright That no one could sleep Burn, baby, and make everyone watch me Everyone watch me, everyone watch me Well... There was only so much I could do at this point. With my promise to Sybil, my lusty night of distraction with Basil, my whatever it is that's going on with Henry, and these callings deep within me, these voices that wouldn't go away no matter how much I tried to shut them up with tequila, with coke with men, with bodies, with whatever the fuck I could get my hands on, it didn't matter because they wouldn't go away. They wouldn't shut up. Dorian? Couldn't sleep, Henry? So you heard. Three missing people from the village in the past week. Karen told you too? That's why you're here? No, I'm trying to get my mind off it, actually. I just figured I'd come check out the club early. Preparations for the big night next week? Hey, I even took down most of the posters you despised. I didn't despise them. Just wanted new ones. Well, hopefully Basil can get those printed and posted for me before the clock strikes midnight and the carriage turns back into a pumpkin. Or whatever you're afraid of. Did you sleep here again? Yeah, I must have. And what were you doing here all night? With anyone? No, no. <laughs> I was writing some new material for New Year's. Guess we're both in focus mode, huh? It's gonna be a special night. 
Don't I know it. Are you nervous? <laughs> Me? No way! The Grey? Nervous for a show? <laughs> no. No, I, I do it every single Saturday night, and the place is always packed anyway. Not so sure about that. Well, I'm heading out now. Uh... Wait, what aren't you so sure about? This place is... Be I mean, you haven't noticed, Dorian? The place can barely get half full on Saturdays. That's a lie, and you know it, Henry. We haven't been at capacity for a while. People are starting to get bored with this whole act. Me? They're starting to get bored with me. Well, hey, maybe that new material will get engagement back in loads. <laughs> Better get to work on it. Need a hit of inspiration? Keep the change. He throws me what looks like a Halloween loot bag, a pack of Marlboro Cigs, a bottle of unidentified pills, a Mickey of tequila, a wee little baggie of white powder, and a red box of matches. Henry took down most of the posters, but some still remained. The one beside the mirror in my dressing room. That night with Basil, after he left, I ripped the horrid thing down so I wouldn't have to stare at it any longer. But the next night when I came in, it was still there. I thought someone was playing a joke on me. <laughs> Henry, or Basil, or Kieran, or... I threw it down as fast as I could and burned it. But that only made it more angry. The next night, the same thing. And the next night, and the next night, and the next night. Someone was doing this. Someone was trying to torture me. Someone knows what I've done. I couldn't tell anyone. Or else everyone would know. Everyone would. So I covered it with costumes and outfits, put hooks to hold things so I would never have to see it again, even if it was trying to haunt me. Sometimes I'd be walking down Alexander Street, and as I turned the corner, I would swear it was there on the lamppost. When I would turn back, it'd be gone, like it was never there. But those eyes, my eyes, they were watching me. They wouldn't let me forget. Your usual, Gray? Why? I said, do you want your usual? Three tequila shots, please. We can only do two for a person at a time. What the fuck did I say to you? Three shots. Coming up. I walk across the floor. No one is looking at me. It's dead. Fucking Henry making me come to this shit. Fuck him. Fuck Henry. Hey. Someone grabs my arm. You're the Grey, right? Yeah. I love your music so much. It's some twink. I've never seen them. I always come for your Saturday sets to watch you play. I, I heard that you're playing on New Year's. I can't wait to see you. <laughs> nice. Do you have a light? I pull out the red matchbox Henry gave me and strike up a flame. <laughs> Thanks. I'm too hot to fuck them. Honestly, can I just be honest for a second? I was so insecure about wearing more feminine clothing out. And usually I, I wouldn't, I would never. Guys here, they don't even give you a second look if you're not masculine enough. But ever since I saw you perform on stage, dressing the way you dress and looking the way you do, <laughs> I feel like I can finally start to be myself here. Not give a fuck about what other people are gonna think of me or be scared because who, who cares? Who fucking cares? Shh. 
Let's dance. Yeah, okay. The music gets louder and louder, and I don't know what the fuck this person is saying, but suddenly, it's happening again. They won't stop. They're making me... Shut up, shut up, shut up. What? I take the cigarette out of their mouth and throw it on the floor. The flame doesn't go out. I stomp on it. I put my hand over their mouth. They lick my hand. I press my nails into their cheeks. I whisper in their ear, shut up, shut up. I hear them swallow. They fall into me, lick from their chin down to their neck and suck. I don't know if they're still conscious. They look up at me. I flip them over so they're not facing me. I touch them. I put my index finger in their mouth. I slide my hand across their waist and down. They thrust away. I pull them closer. I make them kiss me on the cheek. I let my fingers fall down my face, revealing my bottom teeth. They try to pull away again. I wrap one arm around their waist and the other around their neck so they can't go anywhere. They struggle to get out. They try to pull away again, and again, and again, again, and again, 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 and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. I bring my lips to their ear and whisper, faggot, you fucking faggot. They go limp. They don't move very much. I carry them back to the dressing room with me. They have no idea what's happening. I give Kieran eyes and he comes too. The bar closes early that night. The voices stop for a bit. But I start to see the eyes of that picture everywhere. Hello? Hello? Oh, hi. Um, I'm calling from... Is there someone by the name of Dee there? Hanji. Dee, sweetie, oh my god. I can't tell you what a relief it is to hear your voice again. Angie, what? How did you... I'm sorry, I... Are you alright? It's been ten months. I haven't heard a word... I've been worried sick about you. I, I thought you said that- you Angie, I'm to... seriously going to need you to tell me how you found me. I needed to know you were okay. I've been hearing word from a couple people I know in Toronto. They're saying people are going missing in the gay village there? You didn't tell anyone I was in Toronto, did you? Mom or dad or anyone? No, Dee. You trusted me. I'd never do that. Even though they are really sorry for what they- I don't want to talk about it, Angie. That doesn't explain how yes, you- Yes, yes, I, I called every music venue on Church Street I could find in the phone book and asked for you. Seriously, Angie? You really need to take a chill pill, shit. Oh, excuse me for trying to be a good sister. An older sister, especially. Feels very guilty about just allowing you to go without trying harder to stop you. Listen, it was for the best that I left humbled. The prairies don't need me that bad. But I do. You're my rock here, Dee. I know things got a little out of hand with everything- Really, Angie? You're gonna condescend me like that? I I'm just saying that it, it didn't need to escalate- No, it did, because it had been bubbling up for 18 years, and you knew that, and you never did anything to defend me. You- uh, Okay, I need to go. Dee, wait, wait. I, I want you to know that I'm here for you. I mean it. I'm- I'm leaving too. I don't know where yet, but I can't stay here either. For very similar reasons to you. Angie, are you... I I've saved up some money for my job at the roller rink. And I think I have enough for a cheap apartment somewhere. Maybe Edmonton, maybe Vancouver, or Toronto. I don't know, I'm still working it out. If things ever get tough, just know you can call me. 
I'll fax you the number of my new place to the club when I get it. You can stay with me if things get bad, or you want to talk to me about what happened back home. I never... Really... I know. I know. I'm just telling you. I'm here. For real this time. I love you. Love you too, Ange. And hey, I'll wait on that fax. Stay safe, D. I'm just about done with the lyrics for the song. <laughs> I can't decide which one of us I want to sing the last line, or if there's going to be a harmony, but I guess that's kind of dependent on... Dorian. Huh? You good? Yeah, I'm just... I'm thinking about the arrangement for the song. With your eyes closed? No, I just... I, I didn't get much sleep last night. Okay. I'll go to Tim's to get you some coffee. The show is tomorrow. I know, Sib. I'm sorry for being this way. I just don't want to ruin this for you. Hey, hey. You're not going to be the one to mess it up for me. And I'm focused. I got this. I promise. <laughs> what are you going to wear? I... I don't know. I'm playing around with some options. Some are more comfortable than others. Where's the risk in comfortability? What if the risk is scary? You thinking something is scary? <laughs> what world are we living in? <laughs> oh, sit on it. Hey. <laughs> okay. Okay. I have this vision in my head. Me? With a stash, and a suit, and my hair slicked back behind my ears, giving total gentlemen. Upper class, the whole fantasy. <laughs> and then these boots, you know, the purple sparkly ones I'd never wear when I'm dressed more femi? Well that, and your red lipstick. It's weird, I know, it's not really something I would wear usually, but I was thinking a lot about the conversation we had last week, about who's really more authentically you, the person I see in front of the mirror, or the person people see on stage. And I think I'm still trying to figure out the answer, but this feels like it might be a step closer in trying to find out. When I see you on stage, I think, wow, to be a man like that, and to have people see me as that, that feels good. Would that feel good? But then when I'm myself, there's something in me that feels off, the way people see me, but not something inside me. Inside me is beautiful, I think, and it feels good, I think. Maybe it could feel better another way. Maybe being both could feel... <laughs> Maybe I am both. <laughs> but then I'm thinking about how people look at me. What if people see me and think I'm a freak because I don't fit in, or music labels won't even want me because who I am is just this big jumbled mess You are everything, Sybil. <laughs> you know that? You can be anything, and... I will love you as anything. It doesn't matter what you are, because you will always be beautiful. You think that? I know it. <laughs> You're gonna hit that stage tomorrow night, dressed like the fucking rock star you are, <laughs> and you're gonna kill it. People are gonna love you. Oh god, I hope. <laughs> they will. <laughs> If I ever finish this goddamn melody... Hey, let's turn on the radio for some inspiration. Maybe you'll pick up a tune from... It is December 30th, 1978. The time is 6 o'clock p.m. Welcome back to City Pulse for your evening Change update. Change the station, there's no music on this one. Hold on. The disappearance of a 19-year-old man from the gay village is now being reported to the police, adding to the total of four missing people from the oh area. Oh my god. Police are currently investigating, though when asked about any leads on suspects or motive, they announced they believe this has been a series of gay killings and abductions by people in the area. Fucking no next pigs. steps were detailed. The cops aren't going to do shit about it. They don't fucking care. Oh, it makes me so mad. We need to do something about this. What? We should make an announcement or something during the set tomorrow. That way everyone in the village knows what's going on and we can form some type of neighborhood watch so that no one... Sybil. No way. That, that'll totally drag down the mood and make people leave. Dorian! I'm serious. It's New Year's. People are trying to have a good time. 
Party, get wild. People don't want to be thinking about scary stuff. Well, who am I to back down from something scary, right? Love. <laughs> I don't want something like that to ruin this for us. I mean, there could be scouts in the audience looking for talent. What if they don't want a political message as a part of their act? Yeah, like what we do isn't inherently fucking political. What is up with you? Nothing. Nothing is up. I just don't think it's a good idea. Look, I know it's frightening to be in the village, to be a visible person in the village, and I don't want a target on my back just as much as anyone else, but I really think this is something we need to do. <sighs> Remember what you said before? That you didn't want to ruin this for me? I don't. Then, please. I want you to be a superstar. You know this. I would never do anything to jeopardize that. I know. I kiss them. They kiss me back. They go down until they reach my neck and then they suck it. I pull back. You wouldn't hurt me. I love you. I mean that. I love you too. Now get back to work on that melody. It's New Year's Eve, hours until the big show. The picture is seared into my mind. Not only do I see it everywhere I turn, but when I close my eyes, it's haunting me. It's tormenting me, making me look at all of the disgusting parts of my body I never wanted to see, showing exactly everything I hate about myself and making me look is that how I look? Is that how I look? I go to my dressing room to make sure the poster is still covered, but I see myself in the mirror first. And I, I don't know. I don't know which is which. If the poster is the mirror or, or the mirror is me. Am I the poster? Have I become the picture? No. No! I pry the mirror off the wall and smash it to the floor. I look down at my reflection in the cracked glass. It's kind of beautiful to see yourself in a million tiny fragments. All the pieces that make you, you. If one part, one little reflection went away, would it still be me? Dorian, are you okay? I'm fine. You're acting strange. Whatever could you mean by that? Well, you're standing in front of a smashed mirror. I assume you're the one who did it. I will neither confirm nor deny this, but I will say that I was moving it. <sighs> I was trying to move it so I could see my reflection better, but I shouldn't have even tried. Not out of character for you, Dorian. You've been trying a lot of new things out recently. Have you not? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm starting to put the pieces together myself, Dorian, and all of them reflecting back to you. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? <laughs> Stop playing with me, Dorian! Don't pretend that I don't see things because I do. I see everything that goes on in this club. I own the goddamn place! There are four people missing. This isn't fiction, this is real life. There are four people missing. And the cops might not do anything about it, but the people in the village sure will. They're starting to notice. They're starting to realize that David's had something to do with it. And it's not me, trust me. I'm too busy guarding this place from the outside in. So who is it? Who's the one in this joint every night? I don't know what you're accusing me of, but whatever it is- Do you think I was born yesterday? Then don't be an asshole about that. Seriously. Every night, I see you on the dance floor, feeling up some guys who can barely keep awake, bring them backstage to your dressing room, sometimes with bozo bartender Karen, and then all of a sudden in the morning, they're gone? It's suspicious, Dorian. It looks real suspicious. Okay. So what? So 
What? He pulls a picture out of his wallet. It's of a young man. This is Joseph. I met him at the St. Charles Tavern in 65. I was about your age then. When I met him, I thought I had finally found the one person that understood me, had seen me in a way no one else had here. We talked for hours about politics and Toronto's infrastructure, and he would come to my place and we would have sex on my beat-up brown leather couch, and we were just having fun together. He told me about his dreams to make it in the business world. We had such good times together. But we were both young, really young, and we had both just left our homes with new independence, trying to make something of ourselves here, where we had a better chance to do it. Every Wednesday, I would see him at the bar. Until I didn't see him anymore. And I would call and no one would answer. And I thought to myself, some people just don't work out. Maybe he left. Maybe he made it big somewhere and left this life behind. His body was found in a motel room a couple weeks later. It was bad. Really, really bad. And we don't know if it was someone in the community or someone. But I don't. I will never forgive myself for not checking on him, for not protecting him, for not giving him everything that he needed during that time. I can't, and hearing these stories on the news recently, God, it's, it's like it's happening all over again. It's like he's alive, but he's going missing again and again, and I keep reliving it over and over. It won't stop. How do I make it stop, Henry? Kiss me. What? Kiss me, Dorian. I... I want you to put on your red lipstick and kiss me. I'm not... I'm not gonna do that, Henry. Why not? I'm really not. Fine. You've made your choice. Go get ready for the show. It would... Just be such a shame if you were arrested before you got on stage. Arrested? I know what I've seen, Dorian. Your word means nothing. No one will believe you. Are you sure about that? Go tell the pigs. See if they finally start to care. Oh, and Henry? Fuck you. Henry, the posters are... Oh. <laughs> Dorian. Oh. Basil. What are you doing in Henry's office? <laughs> I'm just... I, I was getting a fax. Music for tonight for the band. Uh, from the band. The fax has something to do with music and my band. For sure. Guess you're all ready for the big night? As ready as I'll ever be. I'm... Glad. So, about that night last week when... I've been meaning to talk to you about that. I had the best time. You did? Yeah, it really just confirmed a lot of the feelings I was already, well, feeling. And those feelings are that I really like you. I would love to take you out and get to know you better. Oh. Basil, that's... Really sweet. Really it is. I just... I don't know if I can do that right now. What do you mean? That night... I thought that night meant something. It, it did. What I told you that night, I don't just tell people that personal information. My story, my real... I know. I completely know, and I appreciate that, and... I'm so sorry to have to do this to you, but this can't happen. So what did it mean to you then? What? Our conversation, the sex, that night. I couldn't have just been 
Did it really mean nothing to you? Um. We'll talk later, Basil. I'm sorry. New Year's Eve at David's, baby. Let me hear you make some noise. We're about to ring in 1979 together, so let's get rolling. You ready for this? Yeah. And you're all good? Yeah. Are you nervous? Can I ask you something? Yes. What you said the other day. I say a lot of things. You said that you love me. That? Did you mean it? Why would I lie? And you would love me, no matter what. Yes? They kiss me. Really hard. Then wipe the smudge of my lipstick from the side of their mouth. Then I'm ready. Let's get rockin'. Now, ladies and gentlemen, sexy people of all gender identities, have we got a treat for you. For one night, and one night only, your two favorites in one wild combo. Put your hands together for Vanity and the Grey. Sybil whispers something to me from across the stage, but I can't make out the words. Looks like they say, I love you. I was trying to leave the city, trying to escape the noise. Pretty people have it easy, all they think about is sex and boys. Me, I gotta go my own way, try to copy people I'm not. That worked out kind of funny. Cause every time I'd shoot my shot I was invisible or all too seen A disco ball, a fire A cosmic catastrophe Waiting for the earth to explode And I was a maniac on synth guitar That no one would listen to So I had to run, run. 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 So so I had to. You were always chasing something. Never really heard my voice. I was busy counting dollars. And finally I made my choice. Me, I gotta go my own way. Find a world where I can be heard. I got my golden ticket. And now it's time to be a bird I would be visible and all too seen A disco ball of fire A cosmic catastrophe Waiting for the earth to implode And I was a maniac constant guitar That everybody listened to So I had to run 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 so I had to
soon as we finish, Sybil turns to me. I see them mouth the words, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. My stomach drops. I try to signal the disc jockey to cut the mics, but before I get the chance... Excuse me, everyone. I know we're celebrating here and this is a fun night and all, but if I could just have one more minute of your time... Oh, shit. There are people going missing. Some of our own gay and trans people from the village who are disappearing. There have been four people reported, but there's probably more. The cops aren't doing shit about it. They're not going to protect us. We need to protect ourselves. We need to form a community watch. If you're going out, tell someone. If you're seeing a John, please, I'm begging you, tell someone. You do not want to end up on a motel floor in an alley without anybody knowing. You don't want that. If you see anyone, or think you know anyone who- I unplug the mic myself. Cops won't protect us! Cops won't protect us! Cops Thank won't Thank you, uh, us. to those very talented performers. Now, let's keep this party going, because we are so close to midnight, boys. What the fuck was that? Dorian? No! Don't Dorian me. Don't anything me. Are, are you serious? I did what needed to be done. That did not need to happen. By no capacity did you saying that need to happen. What is wrong with you, dude? Me? What is wrong with me? Yes! That is seriously messed up. Why don't you want to help people, Dorian? Why don't you want to stop people from going missing and getting fucking murdered? What is wrong with you? I told you not to do one thing. One thing! I trusted you! I trusted you with everything in me! I was the one who gave you this slot! I was the one who gave you just about everything you have now! It was all because of me! And this is how you choose to thank me? You told me that you loved me, no matter what. Well, I lied, Sybil. Because you're not the person I thought you were. I thought you were so incredible. I thought you were such a unique, shining star, unlike anyone else. <laughs> but no, it turns out you're fucking pathetic. You're a loser. A disgusting, talentless, confused, wannabe faggot who has no business being here. This space isn't for you. And it never will be. So why don't you just leave? Get the fuck out! Hey, fuck face. I found an answer to my question. The gray a star. Dorian? A total fucking monster. Go burn. I needed to see it. I needed to see the picture one last time. I needed to know who looked worse. I shoved all the costumes and clothes and hooks and hangers out of the way, tore down everything until it was staring at me. Those eyes that I saw every time I closed mine, looking even darker than I had seen them before. I had hit an all-time low. We had. Me and this picture. It showed me everything I had ever hated about myself. Everything I had ever covered or tried to hide. Proudly on display. My face, my torso, my chest, my hips, my legs, every little thing. That's me. That's who I am. I step on a piece of smashed mirror still on the floor. It cuts through my foot. It starts to bleed. 
I go to my knees and try to catch a glimpse of myself in the bits of reflective glass. They're covered in red. I can't even see myself. Not now, Henry. It's Basil, not Henry. Get out of my room. I'm starting to think, Dorian. About what? I'm starting to piece together things I, I didn't realize before. And what would that be? The boys? The people that have gone missing? I've seen them at David's the night before people start talking. Dancing on the floor. Dancing with you. <laughs> what? <laughs> you see boys dancing with me. Who wouldn't? People want to dance with me. I just think it's a little convenient. <laughs> and I just think you should keep your mouth shut because you have no proof. But I have these pictures. I'm sorry? I have these pictures. I showed you that night when we were sitting at the bar together. You and each of the guys that are missing, dancing together really close. I even knew the last one, Jay, in this picture. He was a really nice kid. What did you do to him? I don't know what you're talking about. There's four people missing, Dorian, and there's proof! You can't try to talk your way out of this! I don't know what you're saying! Yes, you do, Dorian! You know exactly what you're doing! You know exactly what you're doing in these photos, I know exactly what you're doing in these photos, and soon the entire village will too! In that moment, time completely froze. Think, 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 Dorian. I had no idea what I was going to do. I had no idea what I was going to do. I had no idea what I was doing. It was like without even thinking, my hands grabbed that red box of matches Henry gave me, took one out. I saw Basil's face drop. Dorian? As I struck the match against the side of the box. Dorian? And threw it to the ground. I grabbed what I could and ran right out the door, trapping Basil and that picture inside. Dorian! Dorian! Hey! Dorian! Once I was outside, I started to see the black smoke billowing from the top of the building, and people starting to run for their lives. I took one last glance at where it all went. So wrong. Ran away as fast as I could, and never looked back. That is, until today. I wanna, and make everyone watch me. The Grey, a wild audio drama, starring Oliver James Parkins as Dorian Gray, Liam Peter Donovan as Henry LeBlanc, Nell Sienkiewicz as Sybil Vanity, Kenneth Johnson as Basil, featuring Gabby Ibrahim as Kieran and the radio announcer, Victoria Watson Sepajak as Angie, Jay, and the disc jockey. Written, composed, and directed by Anthony Palermo. Production management, sound design, and editing by Allison Starkey. Assistant production managed by Caitlin Grant. With musical arrangements by Benjamin Kersey and music mixing by Marco Wong. Dramaturged by Bryn Bonney. Inspired by The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Produced by Victoria College Drama Society. <laughs>